Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 69 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about exception handling in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 66, 67 and 68 of this video series. Exceptions are unforeseen errors that happen within the logic of an application. For example, when reading a file, a number of exception conditions can occur. The file may not exist on the web server, or you may not have permissions to access the file. Let's actually look at an example. I have an ASP.NET web application project here on this webform 1.aspx. I've got a grid view control and a label control. And I have an XML file called countries.xml, which has got a list of countries. And every country has got an ID, name, and continent. We want to display this XML data within this grid view control on this web form. And we want to do that in the page load event. So as soon as the web form loads, we want to display that data in the grid view control. So the easiest way to do that is by using a data set object. So data set DS is equal to new data set. And this data set object has got read XML method which is capable of reading the XML data provided you know we give the path for the XML file now this is an ASP.NET web application project so we need to map the virtual path to the physical directory and to do that we can make use of the server.mappath method we have discussed about server.mappath method in the previous sessions of this video series so let me use server.mappath and then to this we specify the path so tilde indicates the root directory of the web application project. Within the root directory, I have countries.xml file, read that XML file, and then load the data into the data set. So once we have the data within data set, it's very easy to set that as the data source for the grid view control. So grid view one dot data source is equal to data set. And finally, we call the data bind method. That's it. With this code in place, we should be able to re read the data from the XML file and display that within the grid view control. Now we have the file there and the code is working fine as expected. No issues whatsoever. But just imagine what could happen if somebody you know, goes ahead and changes the name of this file or even worse if somebody deletes that file. Let's change the name of the file and see what's going to happen. So when I change the name of the file, or imagine somebody has deleted that file and this piece of code tries to read that file and what's going to happen it will not find that file so let me press enter there and look at that I get an exception here system.io.file not found exception okay so could not find file this particular file is missing okay so whenever there is an exception and if it's not handled then that exception is called as an unhandled exception unhandled exceptions in ASP.NET are displayed using this yellow screen and usually this yellow screen is referred to as yellow screen of death and displaying this yellow screen of death to end users is bad for two reasons number one the error message here is very cryptic and it doesn't really make any sense to the end user and number two, a hacker may use this information to, end, to hack into your application. That's why we should never display this yellow screen of death. Okay, this should only be used by developers to debug you know, the, the, the exception that's happening. Otherwise, uh, there is no reason why we should be displaying this to the external world. So when an exception occurs and if it's not handled, then that exception is called as an unhandled exception. An unhandled exception is displayed to the user using an yellow screen of death. Displaying the screen of death is bad for two reasons. The error messages are cryptic and may not make sense to the end user. The exception information may be useful for a hacker to hack into your application. Now, how do we handle exceptions? We can use the try catch blocks. Okay, try block. So we're going to wrap the code in a try block that could possibly cause an exception. If a statement within the try block causes an exception, the control will immediately be transferred to the catch block. So we know that this code is kind of causing an exception. You know, it's possible this piece of code can cause an exception. So I'm going to wrap that inside a try block. And if any of these lines throws an exception, then we are going to have a catch block. And if you remember, the type of exception that we have caught just now is system.io.file.notfound exception. So usually, in real time, what we do is, after we handle the exception, we log that 
exception information to a database or an event viewer depending on the standards of the organization. Okay, so we will see how to log the information to the event viewer or to a database in a later video session. In this session, we'll see how to handle exceptions using try catch block. But in reality, remember, we log the exception information so that we know what exceptions are happening so that some of the developers can work on those exceptions and resolve those errors. Okay, and in many organizations, we also send emails to administrators notifying that there is an exception situation and somebody needs to address that. And we'll talk about notifications as well in a later video session. In this session, we'll purely concentrate on using these try catch finally blocks. Okay, so we log the exception information and then maybe we'll display a meaningful message to the end user. Maybe we'll just say file is missing or some other message that makes sense to the end user. Okay, so now if we run this instead of uh, getting that screen of death, you know, it will show that meaningful message using that label control file is missing. Okay, and if you look at the way we are handling the exception here, we are using a specific exception, file not found exception. So when this piece of code is getting executed, if, it, if there is a file not found exception, then this catch block can handle that. But if there is any other exception apart from file not found exception, then we're going to have a problem. This catch block will not be able to handle that. For example, you know, um, every piece of code, you know, when a .NET application code executes, it has to execute an, an, under a user account. Okay. Now to figure out what's the account that is used to execute this piece of ASP.NET code, you know, we can use this class. So system.security dot windows identities system dot security dot principle dot windows identity dot get current and we have this name property so now when we run this application when the page actually loads you should see the name of the account under which the application code is getting executed which means this is the account that is used to execute this application code so now that account should have access to this file. Otherwise, you know, we'll get an access denied exception. Okay. Now let's actually open this file in Windows Explorer and to do that, right click on the project, open folder in Windows Explorer and let's look at the permissions on that file. So it's countries one.xml. So I'm going to go to the properties of that and then click on the security tab and if you look at that there is this network service because that's the account that we are using to run the application code so network service so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the permissions to that file for that account so I'm going to deny access so I click apply say S yes. so we denied access to network service account to that file the XML file and then let's change that XML file to what it was, countries.xml. So the application will try to read that. But now, if you look at this, this account does not have permissions to read that file because we specifically disable that. Okay, now let's go ahead and run that and see if this catch block will be able to handle that. Obviously, it will not because, you know, we will get a different exception now. Look at that. It's system.unauthorized exception, unauthorized access exception. But this is file not found exception. So this catch block can only handle file not found exception. So anytime you are you're handling specific exceptions like this, it's always a good practice to have the base exception in the end. Okay, now this catch block will be able to handle any other exception. Now, if it's a file not found exception, that exception will be handled by this catch block. If it's any other exception, then it will be handled by this generic parent exception block. Okay, so if you want to handle, you know, in this case again, this system.unauthorized access exception, you can handle that as well. So system.unauthorized access exception. And then maybe here you will display a meaningful message saying that, you know, access is denied. 
and maybe here we may not exactly know what's what caused the exception to occur so we may display some generic message like this there is an unknown So something like that. There is an unknown problem. IT team is currently working on this issue. Please check back after some time. And obviously before that we need to log the exception. And the same is the case here as well. So always we should be logging exceptions and sending notifications to the required parties so that they can investigate the exception situations. Okay, so exception handling using try catch. Wrap the code in a try block that could possibly cause an exception. If a statement in the try block causes an exception, the control will be immediately transferred to the catch block. Catch block catches the exception and tries to correct the error and or handle the exception. Now this catch block, if you look at this, here we are handling the exception and we are logging the information about that exception to the database and then we are displaying a meaningful message to the end user but in reality we may also use this cache block to correct errors to correct this exceptional situations for example let's say within this try block I'm trying to send an email and then to send the email we need an SMTP server address so basically in my organization let's say we have two to three SMTP servers. Now when I'm trying to send the email using the primary SMTP server, maybe that server is busy or down, so I was not able to successfully send the email, so it threw an SMTP server exception. So obviously it comes to the catch block. In the catch block, I may have SMTP server exception here, and then, you know, once I have catched that exception, I can try to resend that email using a secondary SMTP server. If I am successful, I have actually corrected the situation. If I am not successful, even at that point of time, then probably I will stop sending emails and log the information so that the IT team can investigate that. So catch block can be used to correct exceptional situations as well. And finally, you know, block, you know, try, catch, and finally. Finally block is used to clean up resources. For example, if we are accessing database resources, we know that database connections are valuable. So database connections are always closed in the finally block. Why? Because the finally block is guaranteed to execute irrespective of whether there is an exception or not. Some of the people may say, why can't I have, you know, if I'm accessing database code here, okay why can't I close the connection in the end now if you close the connection in the end if if there is an exception here when you're trying to execute the statement then that piece of code will not be executed and the control will be immediately transferred to the cache block so your connections might remain open okay now irrespective of whether there is an exception or not the finally block is guaranteed to execute so it's always good to have your cleanup code here within the finally block And then we have this throw keyword which is used to raise an exception. So if you want to intentionally throw an exception, um, then we use throw keyword. The base class for all exceptions is the exception class. Specific exceptions should be caught before catching the general parent exceptions and that's what we have seen. So we have specific exceptions on the top and then the general parent exception at the bottom. In this session, we discussed about using, uh, you know, try-catch blocks basically to handle errors. In a later video session, we will actually discuss about how exceptions are generally handled in a real-time ASP.NET application. I mean, we'll discuss about the ASP.NET error events. We have page underscore error, application underscore error, and we'll also discuss about how to use custom errors to display, you know, a customized error page to the end user. And we'll also discuss about logging and sending notifications when ex exceptions occur. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.